Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Yeah, I mean, it's completely unacceptable that we're at this point. Rockford police have a fourth murder to solve in just the last 10 days. The chief lays out an adjusted crime-fighting strategy. Plus, a second comedian's attacked on stage. The steps in place at local venues to keep performers safe. And back on the ice, the Rockford Ice Hogs are in the playoffs for the first time in four seasons. We're live at the BMO to preview game one. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. Four shootings, four people dead in about a week and a half in Rockford. And police have not made any arrests in the murder cases. The latest happened early this morning. A 48-year-old woman was killed on 17th Avenue off of 21st Street. Then on Saturday, a 42-year-old man was shot and killed inside a home on LaPay near Brook Road and 11th Street. A week ago, a 31-year-old was killed on Grant Street. And last Monday, a 56-year-old woman was shot and killed on Greendale Drive. That's around Harrison and Alpine area. Rockford's police chief calls this rash of crime unacceptable. Amory Wilder spoke with Chief Red. Amory, what's the plan to stop the violence? Eric and Mimi, city leaders say the crime is completely unacceptable and they are dedicated to making Rockford a safer place. Chief Carla Red says the department has shifted their manpower in order to solve these murders. Two women and two men have been killed since last Monday. At this time, police do not believe the crimes are connected. The mayor says his office has multiple initiatives in place to help give the youth something positive because that's where a lot of the crime in Rockford starts. While Red says her officers will continue their hard work. We reported last year where that we re recovered a record number of guns, 433 to be exact, okay, which uh, was a, an eye-opening moment for us, I would say. And it also told us that there are a lot more guns out there than what we perhaps thought. Um, right now, looking at year to date, we're somewhere around 100 guns that have been recovered so far this year. Both the mayor and the chief say they need you, people in the community, the neighbors, to help put missing pieces together. In Rockford, for your home team, I'm Amory Wilder. Emory, thanks for that live report. There are several ways to send tips about crimes. You can call Crime Stoppers, contact police directly by phone, or leave the department a message on Facebook. You can also text the word TIP and the information to 847411 or use the new Rockford Police TIP 411 app. It's free for Apple and Android. A Wisconsin man is being held in the Stevenson County Jail tonight on a $1 million bond. He's charged with gunning down a Freeport man three months ago. An arrest warrant was issued for 20-year-old Christopher Scott last month for first-degree murder and aggravated discharge of a machine gun. Police say Scott shot and killed 24-year-old Montrell Scott back on February 10th. Despite having the same last name, the two are not related. Officers found the victim on West Dexter Street near Galena with several gunshot wounds. Earlier today, police spotted Christopher in Freeport. He ran off but was caught and taken into custody. It's been a little more than a day since news leaked. The U.S. Supreme Court appears ready to overturn Roe v. Wade. Some people wonder if other pivotal cases decided on by the country's highest court will be next. Alexander Limon is keeping you connected to the nation's capital. What are the next things that are going to be attacked? If the Supreme Court follows through and revokes the legal right to abortion, President Biden says he's worried about what will happen next. Because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history, in recent American history. Nevada Congresswoman Dina Titus says the impact would be extensive. About 25 to 28 states stand poised to, over, to just eliminate all abortions once this decision goes into effect. Titus says some of those laws would directly target the women seeking abortions. Would go after people who leave the state to go get an abortion. Democratic lawmakers say they're worried that other rights that are not specifically outlined in the Constitution could also be at risk of being struck down by the conservative Supreme Court. The right to birth control, the right to homeschool, the right to uh, different aspects of marriage. The Constitution neither explicitly nor implicitly protects a right to abortion. And Republican Senator Mike Lee says that's a good reason to strike down federal abortion laws. What happens next with regard to abortion will be determined 
by the people of the 50 states through their elected leaders. In Washington, Alexandra Limon. He served in World War II and helped liberate Jews from concentration camps. Today, a local man is honored for his contribution. 97-year-old Don Bein was given the Holocaust Educators Award today from the Jewish Federation of Greater Rockford. Bein now lives at Peterson Meadows in Rockford. He joined the U.S. Army when he was just 17 and helped liberate a concentration camp at the end of the war. Since then, he's been speaking about his experience and sharing his stories. Things he saw um, were so horrific that he made it his life's mission to walk, to go to as many places as he could and tell his story as much as he could so that people understood what happened during the Holocaust and hopefully to prevent something like that from happening again. Bein also fought at the Battle of the Bulge in 1945, the largest and bloodiest single battle in World War II. There are hundreds of jobs open in just one city in the state line. Friday, you can snag one. Rochelle is hosting a citywide job expo. More than 40 local companies will be there from retail to commercial and industrial. Some jobs will be offered on the spot. Others come with hiring bonuses and incentives. City leaders believe there's something for everyone. Well, the workforce issues in this country are huge. The economy is predicated upon whether or not we've got good, qualified people willing to come to work. In Rochelle, Illinois, today, there are over 300 available jobs. People who are looking for an opportunity to improve their job uh, situation, improve their wages, or get into a whole new field, those opportunities are in Rochelle. The Expo is Friday at Rochelle High School's gym from 1230 until 430. This Saturday, the Rochelle Fire Department will go door to door installing free smoke alarms. It's part of the American Red Cross Sound the Alarm campaign. Volunteers will also meet with families to help create a fire escape plan. If you want to be part of the event, you need to sign up. We have a link on our website, mystateline.com. It was something many worried after the Oscar slap. Could another comedian be attacked on stage? And it did happen again. Nikel Delgado spent the day learning how performers are kept safe here in the Forest City. Nikel, what did venue managers tell you? Well, Eric and Mimi, I'm told that the entertainment industry, incidents like this happen way too often to performers. But their number one thing is keeping them safe, not only for the performers, but for guests too. I never want that to happen, obviously, so I don't feel good about it. It's part of the job, though. Video shows comedian Dave Chappelle being attacked on stage. It comes after Will Smith smacked Chris Rock at the Oscars. Doug Johnson oversees and books talents for both the Coronado Performing Arts Center and the BMO Harris Bank Center in Rockford. He tells me while they want everyone to have fun, safety is their number one priority. Especially with Chappelle, if you look at that video, um, nobody really saw that coming. They got on it pretty quick, but still, uh, you, you, hope, you hope to get to some offender before they get to the talent. The Coronado can seat up to 2,400 people, but the BMO is much bigger, holding close to 9,000 depending on the show. Johnson says that's why his team conducts a security meeting before each show. They go through security issues and protocol, stressing when it comes to the safety of these events, communication is key. There was a um, rapper who invited people up on the stage, so uh, that was mayhem. We had about 300 people up there. Johnson says they trained for every scenario, so they're always prepared for the unexpected. You need to be vigilant, and that's why we have a security force here and the arena. We're ready for these kinds of issues, and uh, you just train, train, train. Johnson tells me when things like this happen, law enforcement gets involved and people can be arrested and charged. Eric, Mimi. Now, your first warm weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Wasn't it nice to wake up to some sunshine this morning? Temperatures, even though we dropped into the mid-30s, it was nice to have the sun. Maybe it helped put a little extra pep in your step out there after waking up the last couple of mornings with the clouds. And even today, while we've had a little more cloud cover increase in some areas from time to time, we've held on to a partly cloudy sky and we still have some sun out there this evening. A live look with our Poplar Grove camera sponsored by the Poplar Grove Airport. 
report. Partly cloudy sky, those flat cumulus clouds out there, so not a lot of moisture really here this afternoon. We will see that increase, though, later tonight, during the day tomorrow, and that'll give us our next chance for rain. Hey, something else to look forward to outside of the sunshine today. Sunset tomorrow, 8 o'clock. After tomorrow, gets a little bit later in the evening, so those days getting longer and longer, and eventually we'll see those temperatures really start to warm as we get more summer-like heat returning by next week. Uh, high pressure up to the north of us, keeping our winds fairly light, but as low pressure down to the south and southwest, now working across parts of the central and southern plains, moves closer to us. Wind speeds will start to pick up later tonight and into the day tomorrow. This system bringing severe weather down through parts of Texas, Oklahoma, we do not have to be concerned with any of that. 59 our temperature in Freeport, 61 in Rockford, Belvedere, 59 currently in Rochelle, 59 also for our weather watcher Ben up in South Beloit. We're 59 for Mike here in Forreston and 61 for our weather watcher Bob on the southeast end of Rockford. No rainfall today. We stay dry tonight. We'll see a partly cloudy sky until about midnight. Cloud cover then comes back in as our wind speeds pick up. Clouds tonight will likely keep our temperatures right around 40 degrees. I don't think tomorrow we wake up quite as cool as what we were this morning, even though it didn't feel overly terrible with the sunshine out there. We start to see that low pressure system move closer to us. We've got a few light showers that'll work in, likely more mid to late afternoon. Now, Futurecast keeps us somewhat dry during the overnight Thursday. I think we've got some steady rain that comes down, and then that'll carry over into Friday morning. Winds will be coming in from the east, so unfortunately, we don't get a lot of warmth for Friday afternoon. Near 60 tomorrow, upper 50 for Friday, but we do start to dry out once we get into Friday night and Saturday. Mother's Day weekend, I think Saturday should be a pretty good day. Mid-60s underneath a partly cloudy sky. We could see an isolated shower there midday Sunday, but I don't think it'll be anything that'll hamper your plans. Temperatures then are going to warm up in a big way next week. That blocking high pressure system, we go from one extreme to the next to temperatures that'll make it into the low to mid-80s, maybe even a couple 80s once we get into actually that Wednesday high should be near 86. Uh, not quite near that record high temperature, but we come close, and I think we could come close to that Wednesday, that record high 91, which was set back all the way in 2011. Now, with us underneath that ridge, we are kind of close to that higher moisture going into next week as well. So not out of the realm of possibility that we could actually have maybe an isolated shower too, but you'll start to feel that humidity go up. So 40 degrees, that's where we go for the overnight tonight with a little bit more cloud cover tomorrow. That temperature will make it up near 60. We're 58 for Friday, 66 on Saturday. I did bring the temperature down just with a little more cloud cover midday. We're staying up in the upper 60s and then we warm here as we get into next week. 81, 83, 86. Looks like it'll be a pretty nice week next week. Warm too. And something I do want to mention, guys, with uh, the heat returning next week, you're also going to feel a little bit more heat humid too tomorrow. So if we really see those dew point temperatures rise, I mean, that could be a big adjustment compared to where we've been these last several weeks. And yeah, we haven't had that to complain about in a while. <laughs> yeah. Is she warning us not yeah. to complain? Yeah, I think that's, that's how she well, said it. You know. So she, she walked over to the desk to intimidate us too. <laughs> how dare that you that guys? Is. Candace, thanks. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. Good evening from the BMO Harris Bank Center. I'm Scott Lubber coming to you live where tonight we've got Ice Hogs hockey. The Hogs have been working for this moment since late September. Finally, some playoff action that we're going to see here tonight as they open up a best of three game series against the Texas Stars. The Ice Hogs will host every game of this brief series. That's because they earn the fourth seed in the Central Division, Texas right behind in the number five spot. But really, how important is home ice advantage in these playoffs? During the regular season, both of these teams posted better records on the road than they did at home. The Ice Hogs at home were two games over 500 at 18, 16, and 2. On the road, they were five games over 500 at 19, 14, 2, and 1. The Stars at home were a 500 team, but on the road, they were 17, 13, 3, and 3. But the Ice Hogs are certainly thrilled that they are taking the ice here and not in Texas. Saves us going out to Texas, so uh, you know it's uh, nice playing in front of our, in front of our fans here, and uh, you know sleeping in our own bed. So I think it's a it's, it's a good advantage to be at home, and uh, looking forward to hearing the crowd. Well, I think the home ice is going to be a little bit of a factor here. I think that uh, we're comfortable playing at home. I think we if we play with pace, 
and we play a, a fast-paced game, I think they're going to have a hard time handling us. Let's hope so. The intensity level in playoff hockey goes way up. Ryan Stanton knows that very well. He's been involved in the Calder Cup playoffs four times before in his career. It definitely cranks up a notch. I mean, I think it goes series by series. Like when me and Mitchie went, uh, we played a series against Wilkes-Barre. I think we went seven games and it was a war. Like guys were slashing each other in warm-ups. Like it was, you know, a couple older teams, veteran teams, and, you know, it was a grind. This game will start at 7.05 tonight in Chicago at Wrigley Field. The White Sox and Cubs will go at it again. The Sox won last night 3-1. to one. Tonight's pitching matchup will be Lucas Giolito against Kyle Hendricks. That well, was a proud moment at Belvedere High School this afternoon. That's right, the football team enjoying a proud moment. Six Bucks football players signed with colleges to continue their football and academics. Chris Booth signed with Roosevelt University. Justin Dennis signed with Liberty Prep. Caden Finistad signed with Rockford University. Mike Loading with Loras College. Warren Taylor with Rockford University. And Aaron Woolman with UW Oshkosh. They made a positive impression on first year head coach Tony Ambrosio. It, it, you know, the seniors are usually a heartbeat of any program. So, you know, obviously coming in new and getting to know all these guys, it's just getting, these guys really stepped up. I really appreciate their toughness and their heart. Good luck to those young men. Ice Hogs playoff highlights coming your way tonight right here at 10 o'clock. That's it from the BMO. We'll be right back. The first Warren Interactive Radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Skies will stay dry here. It's nice to see the sunshine today. Temperatures in the upper 50s and low 60s, so still just a little bit below that average, but the sun makes a world of difference. Tonight, we get a little more cloud cover. We're down to about 40 degrees. Tomorrow, up near 60. Clouds to start us off with. We'll look for some rain to move in by tomorrow afternoon. About a half an inch up to another inch. I think that inch is going to be a little more likely to the south of us. Half an inch uh, for most of us here. 58 on Friday. We're drying out Saturday. Small chance for a shower Sunday and then 80s next week. All right. Thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some of your time with us. Stay safe.